Hey guys, it's Tori. Welcome to my channel or welcome if you're new. So in today's video, I'm going to walk you through start to finish on how to make this bling sweatshirt. It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be so detailed. I hope to answer all of your guys' questions. So let's get started. So the first thing I wanted to do is just kind of go over a little bit really quick um because i know when i started this project it was kind of overwhelming to me at first i had questions about because you probably have the same questions i am buying everything from amazon i'll be going to show you what everything is so for this project we are going to use flock paper this is rhinestone flock paper and it has an adhesive backing which i will show you more later when we get there so i'm going to use this I'm also gonna leave everything in the descriptions for you. And I'm also using this transfer tape. This is for hot fix rhinestones. Something with this transfer tape, you can reuse it over and over. Once you cut a piece, you can reuse it. And we are gonna need one of these little tools. And this is like a painter's um, trim paint cut. I forget what this is called, but <laughs> we're gonna need one of these. And this is the rhinestones that I'm going to use. So when you use the rhinestones, they have to be hot fix. So these are hot fix. They have to say hot fix rhinestones. The difference between these and other rhinestones is these have an adhesive backing. So when you apply it to the template, it's going to adhere to the fabric. They also come in tons and tons of different sizes and colors. And on the back here, you can see the different sizes SS stands for stone size. So it starts at SS3 and it goes all the way up to SS40. So there's variation of sizes. So what I'm going to use in today's project are these and these are size 10. So these are stone size 10. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you how you find out what stone size you need and just everything. So you guys ready to get started? Also, I'm going to do a giveaway. So stay to the end and I will explain more, but let's get started. So we are gonna start over in Creative Fabrica. And if you type in rhinestone in the search field, you will get a whole bunch of different templates that you can use. They have everything from different fonts that you can use with bling to having the actual image that you may want. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this image today. And before you download an image or before you a final decision on the image that you wanna use, it's important to pay attention to a few things. So let me walk you through those. The first thing is it'll always tell you stone size. So you need to know that this one is stone size 10. SS stands for stone size. So this is stone size 10. If you click on different ones, you'll see that some of them are 10, some are eight, and they just have different stone sizes. So you have to pay attention to that. And then if you scroll down a little bit, it'll tell you the file size. So it says here that this one is 10 by five. So this template is already set for stone size 10, which means that you have to keep that file size. You can't adjust it at all because if you adjust it and make it bigger or smaller, that changes the stone size. And so unless you you know have a way of knowing what stone size, it's best just to follow this template. And that is important to pay attention to. So I'm gonna go ahead and download the template. We'll save it to the desktop, and then we're gonna go ahead and upload it over over to Cricut Design Space. So now we're in Cricut Design Space. We're going to hit new project. Next, um, on the bottom left-hand corner, you will click on upload, and then we're gonna upload image again, and then browse, and you're gonna go to where you saved it and double click on that image. And then that will load your template. And then I'm gonna go ahead and change this name to rhinestone faith because then if you are looking for this later on it's just so much easier when you label it to pull it up and then we're going to hit upload and then we're going to select faith and add to canvas remember we cannot change the size at all we have to leave it as is and if you'll see here this is just the 
verbiage faith and we want to create a template so we can reuse this over and over and the way to do that select shape and I'm gonna just click on like a rectangle and let's change this color let's change it to blue okay so what you'll want to do is just unlock it and stretch it out and make it about the same size just a tad bit bigger than this so now i'm going to select faith and hit arrange bring to front slide this back here so i am going to just kind of move, move this over and let's unlock this and i'm going to just kind of bring this in a little bit this is going to be my template the blue part so i'm going to go ahead and just take this off really quick and scroll down here so we have the template ready. So now we need to prepare the bling faith. So we're gonna select this and it is already grouped so we don't have to group it together. And we're gonna hit combine and we are going to weld it. You will see over here on the right hand side that it says that it is welded. So that is done. And now we are going to place faith back onto the template. And this looks perfect to me but if it bothers you guys and you want it to be perfect, you can always select it and then hit align and you can always center it so it's just right in the middle. And now we're going to go ahead and hit attached because we want to attach to faith onto the template so it cuts everything on that template. Okay, so you can see here on the right hand side it says attached so you know that this is attached. And what I like to do is save because Cricut Design Space is kind of slow sometimes or sometimes, I don't know, if anything happens, you wanna have it saved because you don't wanna have to start all over. So let's go ahead and save it really quick. Before we hit make it, the flock that I'm using that I got from Amazon, it actually tells you the force and the speed, the passes, the blade, all that kind of stuff. So what we're gonna do is create a material setting for this specific flock, and I'm gonna show you how. So we're gonna go up here to, you'll see your profile, and you're, we're gonna do the drop down, and we're gonna go over to settings, select machines, and then we're gonna go down here where it says custom material settings, create your own pressure setting and hit start. And then it's gonna load your Cricut machine and you wanna make sure your Cricut machine is on so it can find it. We're gonna do the drop down and select the machine you're going to use and give it a few seconds and it will pop this up, which is the custom material. And we're going to just press the arrow button to scroll all the way to the bottom. And then at the bottom, you're going to select add new material. And I'm going to type in custom just so I know that this is something that I entered. And I'm gonna put blue because the flock that I'm using is blue and I also have another flock that's pink. So I am going to type in blue and then put flock. And then I'm going to select save. And then up here you can move this to do the the pressure, so I'm gonna change my pressure to 245 since that is what it recommends. And then it also says to do two passes, so I'm gonna change it to two passes and find point. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and that's it. We're gonna scroll back down to the bottom and hit done. So now we are ready to hit make it. On the mat, confirm, and I'm going to use a 12 by 12 mat, and you do not mirror it, so we leave that off, and we're gonna go continue, and we're gonna do browse all material, and in the search field, I'm gonna type in custom, blue, and then just enter, and it'll pull it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that, and just hit done and change the default to more. And now we're ready to go ahead and load the mat. So I'm going to use the green Cricut mat. Here is the flock we're going to use. And I just noticed that this comes with transfer tape, but I went ahead and I used a different transfer tape, but let's use that one. Let's see how that one works. Because the other one that I showed you works good. Let's see if this works good as well. This is like a sticker. We're going to uh, peel this off and this is sticky. 
and then this is the backing. We need to save this because this is what we're going to place the template on when we're done. So I'm going to go ahead and take this off the mat and set that aside. And then I need to place this on here. And this is very sticky. So just kind of line it up and place it down. And then you want to take a brayer and just rub over it. And you just want to make sure that this is attached and there's no bubbles or anything like that. So now we are ready to open the Cricut and we're going to place this in here. And we're going to go ahead and press the button. And then we're going to hit go. And now we're ready to remove the Cricut mat from the Cricut. Before we remove the flock off of the Cricut mat, I like to take the brayer first to roll it back and forth over the flock. So the next step is to remove the flock from the Cricut mat. And we're going to transfer that over to the cutting mat is actually what this is called. I just happen to have this laying around the house and I'm not really sure what this is, but what most people are using is similar to this and they've purchased it like at the Dollar Tree and it's actually called a cutting board. So you can use something just like that. So now we're ready to just remove the flock from the Cricut mat slowly and the goal is to keep as many of the dots on the Cricut mat and if you're starting to pull it up and you notice that there are a lot of dots that are still on the flock you can just place it back down and roll over it with the brayer and then you'll just want to just go ahead and slowly remove the entire flock from the Cricut mat. Then we're going to take this and just kind of put it up like this and we are going to place it on here. Then we're going to take the brayer and just go over it and we're going to set this aside. This is how you remove this um, just in case it's your first time. You just do that and you can get like a paper towel and wipe this on a paper towel. So this is the transfer tape I was telling you about that I have used in the past and I really didn't realize that this flock actually came with transfer tape. So I'm going to use what came with it. So if it works great, then you guys don't even have to buy this. So we're going to go ahead and start with that. So the first thing we're going to do is just cut this a little bit. We're going to trim it to fit better. Let me just cut here. And I'm going to cut just a little bit off here as well. And remember, you can reuse this. So let's just run through here and double check. So here I'm missing one. And here. I don't know if that's one or not. I don't think so. Here's this one. And let's just double check, make sure this is everything. That did really, really, really good, you guys. That got, like I think all of it except four of them. Um, and the pink one that I used was so all over my hands and so messy, I did not enjoy that. So that's it, guys. So this one is ready to go. And we have someone here fixing our AC, so I apologize if you can hear that. So we're gonna go ahead and place this on here. And then I'm going to use these hot fix and this one is violet and remember it's SS10. What we're going to do is pour some of this out on here and I'm going to show you how to do it. So we're going to go ahead and just pour some okay, just like that and then this is where we use this and you just go in circular motion because what you want it to do is just go and fall into those cuts that we just did and I'm doing this from standing up sideways so it's, it's a little bit difficult so I'm gonna turn this up to me you guys so I can see it better I just have the camera angled so I, you guys can see what I'm doing and I'm not used to standing up doing this okay 
And the reason we have the pan underneath is to catch, you know, any of the excess you're doing, otherwise it's all over the table. And this is another reason why it's so important to pay attention to what size stone it says to use because if it, the stones are too big, it's not going to even, you know, go in the hole. And what I do is I just go in circular motions and I maybe go a little bit to the left, a little bit to the right, whatever way it'll go in. Let's add a little bit more. And I'll show you just um, another thing that you can do is you can take, make sure that you can see this. Okay, so this is a wax pencil. And they actually, this actually is one that's for nails, but it still works. But there's other ones that you can use. You're just gonna um, tap it and it sticks. And then you're just going to place it right there in the hole. So let me see if you can tap and then so some of these did not want to go in, so I can just tap and add it real quick, just like that. And I think this is because I'm standing up and I'm not, I'm not really positioned like I normally am. So it's a little, I feel a little bit off. Oh, those kind of got stuck in there. Okay, so let's see. I'm going to be using the HTV Ront Auto Press. So now is a good time to go ahead and preheat that. And we're going to do temperature 305 for 20 seconds. So let's go ahead and get this transfer tape on first. And what I recommend is you'll just kind of fold this in half. First, make sure that you have enough and it's okay. So we're gonna go ahead and start in the middle and just place it down. Perfect, okay. And then I like to take the brayer and just go over it carefully because the transfer tape is obviously sticky i want it to stick to the rhinestones so when i pull it off i want it to all be there so that's why i like to use the brayer just make sure i get all of it okay so i'm going to use this pad to place underneath here or actually in between the sweatshirt so we're just going to place this in here. And the reason I'm doing that is because I want it to have extra pressure when the auto press goes down. So I have that right there and make sure it's in the centered center. Okay, so the next step is taking a lint roller and just going over this and making sure you get everything up. And then we're going to pre-press it for 20 seconds. Okay, so I just pre-pressed it for 10 seconds. Okay, so now we are ready to take this and we are going to take it off very carefully and we're gonna apply it here. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm just gonna take it off really slowly, just like this. And you should have the brayer nearby just in case some of it doesn't pick up. You can always push it back down and then you can just run over it again or roll over it again. It's actually, oh, there's one. I spoke too soon. So let me just, I'm going to go over it with my finger. You actually don't even have to use the brayer. Okay, so let's see. Okay. Okay, so that one just doesn't want to come. So we can place that on here. Cool, so it's just one. So, so let's set this aside. And it's sticky. Okay, so we are going to grab the wax pen paper. And I'm going to take this. And now this now has to go the opposite way. So I'm going to pick it up from the adhesive side. Whoops, okay, and this went right here. Okay, so this is all set, and I'm just gonna turn it over. I'm kinda gonna try to line up the eye just right here in the center. So let's go ahead and do that. We're gonna pick it up and place it down. So to me, that looks perfect. And let me just see really quick. Okay, so this is perfect. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this back under here. I'm not going to place 
any parchment paper or Teflon or anything on it. I'm gonna do it straight on here for 20 seconds. And now we're gonna pull it out. And we're ready to go ahead and pull it off. It's that easy. And remember, we can reuse this transfer tape. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place this back on this sheet, which is right here. Okay, so here are the rules for the giveaway. And what you'll get is this Faith sweatshirt. And this is so, so, so soft. This is actually a size small, but let me tell you, it may be a size small, but it is actually fits like a size large. So it is very big, small. So I think regardless if you wear small, medium, large, this would honestly fit you. It is huge and it's so comfy. So here's the scoop. This is what you have to do to enter the giveaway. You have to like my video. You have to be a subscriber and you have to comment below. And what you need to comment with is what color bling would you use if you were making a sweatshirt? That's pretty easy, you guys. And then what I'm going to do is pick a winner um, next. I'm going to pick a winner next Tuesday, which will be the 19th of March. And the contest will run until 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then I'll pick a winner shortly after that. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope that I answered everyone's questions. I tried to think about all the questions that you guys may ask and I hope I was able to answer all of them and this is actually just perfect. So anyway, you guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I wanna show you guys something super quick. So if you are interested in any of the products that I use, just to make it easier for you guys, all you would need to do is go in the descriptions. You'll see here, check out merch on my Amazon. All you have to do is just click on that link and it'll take you directly over to my Amazon storefront. And if you scroll down, I will have the first one pinned, mm -hmm. says Bling Rhinestone Supplies. If you click in there, I will have all of the supplies that I used in today's video, just kind of posted all in here and if you keep scrolling down you will see the rhinestones i just think this might be easier to kind of have everything right at your fingertips so thanks guys